Hello everyone. Welcome you all to the Techic webinar. Thank you for joining the session today. The topic of today's talk is performance engineering concepts. It will be a one hour session with around 40 to 45 minutes for the presentation and the remaining time for the question and answer. So if you have any questions, please send them to us using the questions tab on the go to webinar control panel. I am Akriti, the moderator of this session, and it gives me immense pleasure to introduce you to our guest speaker, Lena Narayanan, project lead at Emphasis. Lena joined the Emphasis family two years ago as a performance engineering lead. Currently, she is the key person responsible for setting up the performance engineering infrastructure in client reporting technology. She has nine years of experience working in performance testing and engineering services across banking, travel and hospitality, healthcare and retail domains. Prior to emphasis, she served as a performance test lead. So without any further delay, let me introduce you to our guest speaker. Over to you, Lena. Thank you, Priti. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all having a good day. So let me start. These days, all of us are doing online shopping. So online shopping is very common. Assume you're shopping on a prime day, adding to your cart very carefully chosen items based on the prices, brands, quality, along with the delivery options. Which then we are later, once you are content, you are decided to make the payment. Just when you enter the OTP, the side crashes, emptying your cart, so how do you feel? Frustrated? Furious? So this is the moment many of the shopping chain lose valuable customers. We are here to address such challenges and ensure the website function optimally to give giving fantastic user experience for each user. So let's lead to our core topic today, performance engineering. So we'll discuss on this performance testing and engineering methodology later. So let's get into this. Why performance engineering? Why it is needed? The, so performance of the application plays a major role in today's world. If the performance of the application is slow, we try to switch to another application to perform the same task. As we know, Amazon application got, got crashed during a prime day and it was out for a couple of minutes, due to which the company lost billions of dollars. Similarly, there had been the several incidents which is happening on the online applications. So an airline grounded all their planes due to some technical problem. The computer was not giving the accurate information. So it means these these problems are creating because of the lack of the performance. So to, uh, it, uh, and also we need to address such issues. So it clearly says that the user experience and the managed people of the managed performance of the application must be incorporated throughout the application lifecycle. It also indicates all the code has to be tested regularly as well as on demand to ensure the quality and stability of every integration. So performance engineering team owns the responsibility of identifying the issue and providing a solution. So let's see how do we achieve that. Effective workload modeling. So there are four things which key things which we need to do on the workload modeling. So we need to gather the business, our business requirements. What is the possible set of actions that a user can perform? And what is the expected ratio for each scenario? How does the number of users logged onto your site varying with varying time? And next is like, what is the maximum number of users logged into your application? And finally, duration of the test to be executed. So these are the four, uh, five major things that you need to analyze or you have to gather before doing the workload modeling. So next comes like, we need to analyze what are the kind of tests that you need to perform. 
So that kind of test decide on the based on the application. So that so during the requirement phase, you need to analyze and identify what kind of test has to be performed, and the application and database profiling. So the profiling. So the profiling is used to identify the bottleneck by doing deep analysis. So profiling helps in optimizing the code by providing granular data for a process, the thread, and the function or the methodology, and also the sequence steps. So profiling. So this for profiling, there are various tools which is available in the market, and you have to dis, uh, decide the tool based on the technology and the cost factors. This will the data profiling tool will be decided. Next is like you have to do proper analysis and monitoring. So these are the four things which is majorly needed to achieve it. So here comes what is the challenges? What are the challenges in doing the performance engineering? So dedicated environment, always it is there. So dedicated environment is a challenge for our performance testing. So in performance environment, there might be some kind of components like uh, mainframe or SOAP services, which would be shared across the QA. So to avoid, uh, so this will impact the predictable uh, results and predicting accurately. Sometimes the application team is not sure about the, uh, and, uh, about the response time or the SLA or the utilization or the throughput value, there will not be any kind of the baseline metrics which will not be available. So this is another challenge. Next is lack of PE, dedicated PE efforts. So when I'm saying lack of dedicated PE effort, there might be a PE team, but they're not only like a, a kind of a organization pattern, how the PE has to be aligned with. So there will be some craze like we'll be providing the recommendations and uh, okay, identifying an issue and we are reaching out to the autumn, uh, application team and the application team has to be prioritized like how it has to be. And if it is not prioritized, then the, all the prediction, whatever the results which will not be taken into actions and all the results will be in vain. So these are the four challenges that we have in current talk. Uh, See a uh, current P life cycle. So going to this met performance testing and engineering methodology, if you can see there are various kinds of phases. So let me quickly take up the planning phase. Oh no, before planning phase, let me take analysis. Yeah, analysis. What is this? Analysis comes the first? Yes, here we need to analyze the business requirements. So we need to gather the business needs and Determine the SLA offered, the service level agreement. So it SLA is nothing but the service level agreement. You need to gather it from the application team owner or the business. What is your application SLA? And we have to predict the growth and the volume of the production application. So you how 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 the growth pattern is, how frequently the users are getting into this product uh, into the particular application. And also you need to analyze the design of the architecture. Next comes the plan phase. Yes, planning. So where in planning, we need to identify the process, how the data is loaded from the source to target. Test approaches that the strategy plan, implementation of a project, define how the test would be carried. There are two approaches. One is proactive and reactive approaches. So proactive approach. Tests and processes initiated as early as possible in order to find and fix the default defects before the build is created. In the reactive approach method, the testing is not started until after design or the codings are completed. And finally, the workload model. I'm just saying workload model. We are going to talk brief in the later slides. So this is these are the things that comes under the planning phase. So next goes to the execute. Hmm. 
Just a minute. This one. Yeah. So during the execute phase, like uh, we need to request the dedicate for the dedicated environment and for performance environment should be the same as the production environment. It should be similar. The performance server configuration should be similar to the production. So that will help in running the test effectively and we can predict the results. effectively so determine that test and also we need to implement the test design execute the similar test uh, to ensure the value uh, execute the smoke test to ensure like the the test data is validated and uh, trigger the load test or what are the kind of tests that you have planned for you have to execute that then once you've done the execution you need to analyze the logs analyze the test results and uh, analyze the transactions which has breached the SLA during your test run and so using the APM tool you need to identify the hotspot and provide the recommendations for the improvement so these are the things that comes into the execute phase and next is profiling so the profiling during this profiling phase so this is the second part of performance testing so the profiling is used to find the bottom application by doing analysis it helps in optimizing the code by providing granular data for a process methods sequence etc so during the profiling phase we do analyze the session logs the heap the thread dump and also the workflow statistics and on the client and and also we do analyze the client and server performance metric like utilization gc q depth and db statistics so these are the things that we do panel on the profiling phase next is uh, tuning so once we identify the issue then we are doing this tuning factor so you spot out what is the function or the methodology so where you need to provide the recommendation for them like okay this is the uh, this is the recommendation which helps in improvement so we will be providing that recommendations to the team so once that uh, issue is okay if the developer fix that issue he will be asking us to read or uh, retest it so retest redeploy the code and execute the test and check for the performance so if you are seeing some improvement then your code is uh, so your suggestion is valid and it the code is working fine the changes will be implemented in the production if it is no then we will redo the test and we'll do profiling again we'll identify what is the kind of issue what is the function or the method which is breaking it so you have to add it once it is identified again goes into the same phase so these are the various five phases that we have in the performance and engineering and technology uh, methodology. So we'll see. We'll go to this performance engineering approach. Yes, in this engineering approach, uh, like we are having two methods. One is in sprint performance. Just, just a minute, guys. So during the in sprint performance, the performance testing will be executed every sprint. So during the sprint in initiation, the performance team will assess the team members by providing recommendations on the best practices. It helps in making code more robust. Also, performance test will be executed to understand the functionality or the methods response type and memory leak if any. It can be performed using any of the tools like .NET Probe, Java Probe, or, or any industries. It is also industry standard, like HP, the micro focus right now they are saying yes. So these are the tools. Like, can I say like these tools will be like, you need to understand what technology are you working in, and the tool will be based, uh, decided based on that. And finally, the performance test results are analyzed to determine if the acceptance criteria are met and the report is shared to the entire Agile team. So this is the, so it is it is only for sprint basis. So once we're done with the sprint basis, what is the next thing? 
So next is regression performance. So during the regression performance, during the code will be integrated and the integrated features are tested. So this test is to ensure that the developed feature is not impacting any performance issues in the overall system. During this test, the regression scenarios will be tested along with the new scenarios pointing to the new code. The workload model will be redesigned to accommodate the new changes and also we have to uh, follow the same protection pattern. So that will be taken care of here. Here, if you can see, there are like uh, three things. One is sprint end, sprint end plus one. So during the first sprint, you'll be gathering the requirements and you'll be like identifying performance candidate. And second thing, during the next sprint, you'll be doing the scripting, execution and development, analysis and solution. And next, like uh, it will be keep on continuing. And if you see the release integration, you will be doing the execution in the perform execution analysis and sign off. So this and scripting in default, it will be included. So you need to do the scripting regularly and do the execution and, um, and analyze the uh, performance issues. And finally, sign off that build. So yeah, here comes like, let's look um what are the type of tests that we are doing so there are various type of tests in performance um, um in performance like load test stress test stability scalability volume and client set profiling so these tests are decided based on the objective so when i'm saying object uh, of the objective so we'll talk about each one like load testing the objective of the test is to identify the bottleneck before the application goes live. So during this testing, the ability of the system and the application performance will be identified under anticipated load, which is most important. You want to identify what is the anticipated load. Once you are clear, then do this testing. So next is stress test. So why we need to do the stress test? It is to identify the breaking point of the application. So during this test, application will be tested under extreme workload to see how the application handles high traffic. And just in my future, in uh, the application might get or something you will have at like a prime day or something. So you do, you are just ensuring like okay, this is. Uh, uh no uh, this test ensures like okay this is uh, okay the application is safe and it will handle it so next comes the stability which is also called as endurance test so this test is like uh, we need to identify the memory leak of the application just to identify the memory leak we'll be doing this test for a prolonging period of eight hours or 16 hours or 24 hours so this time duration will be like uh, you you have to check with your application team owners to understand okay whether eight hour period is fine or 16 hour and you can also give the recommendation so what kind of uh based on the environment you can say okay we are going to run this many number of hours and uh, the stability will be performed uh, and uh, the scalability testing yeah we, here we are trying to identify the scalable limit of the service. This test will be conducted if we are going to have a new platform or a new server or some like scaling which is done like horizontal or the vertical scaling, then this test will be performed to determine the capacity uh, of the system. And finally, load volume testing. So volume testing. This is uh, this test is generally placed on the database side. So they will be adding up the by increasing the volume of the database, the test will be executed and we'll be seeing the system performance during this, like uh, how the data with the increasing user load or uh, increasing data of the database, how the uh, how the system is behaving. So all the above set test, all the mentioned tests were like totally towards like server performance. Like uh, when you need to understand the client side 
okay, which Java, whether the my JavaScript is taking more time or something like that, you need to do the client side profiling. So it is also called as like front end profiling. It is uh, all about we need um, like how fast the page is loading, where we used to evaluate the web page and also provide suggestions to minimize the web page load time. Some of the uh, front end performance testing tools like uh, page speed, wise low, firebug, web page test. So these are the, there are many tools which is available in the market. Again, the tools will be different and the technology and this will be decided. Yes, so we discussed about the type of test. Let's talk about the key metrics. So during the, in the performance uh, test uh, results, you'll see like uh, we'll be analyzing the transaction response time, which is the major key thing, which tells about which transaction is consuming most time and uh, which tra transaction is like uh, reaching the SLA. So though that will be an, that will be provided. Next transaction per second and uh, how many transactions were executed per second. So that and also like uh, CPU utilization, memory utilization. So various, these are the various metrics that we use to provide in the report. And uh, we'll see the tools. Yeah, there are various tools which is available as I said, like of some of the major tools we can see like HP Load Runner, JMeter, Apache JMeter, Visual Studio Ultimate, so these three tools, which comes into the like when you do need to do scripting, execution, and analysis, this two like uh, the server side thing, um, metrics kind of thing, you can get it from these tools. So when it comes to analysis, so you need to monitoring and analysis, you need to use the app dynamics. So it is an application performance management tool where we can identify and drill down the function or the methodology which is taking more time during your test and the splunk splunk is like uh, we, we use the splunk for monitoring the performance and also we use it for analyzing the logs if there are some exceptions or something we used to uh, take use the we do have the Splunk, okay, okay, these are the exceptions that has ha happened during our test. So that needs to be gathered during the execution. And the HTTP watch, this is another tool for monitoring the client side performance. Yeah, there are other kind of supports that we provide, the technical supports, what are the technical supports that we provide in the performance engineering cycle. So we support the web applications, web uh, SOAP services, uh, service virtualization, batch processing, infrastructure upgrades. So for, for whatever the changes which is going on, we'll be testing and we'll be providing the sign off to them. Okay, this is, uh, this is what we have done and uh, this is how your application looks when we are doing some upgrades. So when, I, when we are talking about the service virtualization, it is the method just to emulate the behavior of the specific components, um, such as like API-driven applications or the cloud-based applications or the server. So sometimes in application, there might be, I said, like uh, there are some middle layer component, which is uh, which you, which will be shared across many multiple teams. Then you need to do kind of this kind of like service virtualization to ensure, okay, you're testing only for yourself. So that also performance engineering team will take care of. So yeah, let me go to the next one. There are some key activities that we perform during the regression phase. So we'll see. Okay. So during the, so do, uh, it is some regression. So regression is performed during the, uh, for the existing application to make sure that the change or the additional uh, uh, um, additional functionality or method, which is not breaking your existing one, the older one. The, pu the purpose of the test is to identify the performance issues that may be accidentally 
introduced in a new build or in release candidate. So we follow such, um, uh, we do, uh, we, pros, uh, we have some of the key activities that we follow regularly during the re uh, regression testing. One is like we have to uh, uh, request for the latest code to be deployed, or if you have the permission, you can um, deploy the latest code in the performance environment. And then once the build is deployed, validate the test data. Or your, and in some cases, the test data has to be created before every run. It might be an XSD data, so you need to do it. And clean up all the unwanted data. Then perform single user uh, profiling to evaluate the web page performance. Next is, to, so the script, test scripts, generally I would prefer like, we have to uh, give a suggestion of test script has to be recreated uh, for the F release because there might be some kind of a minor change which might be impacting your run too. So just ensure like the scripts are getting recreated, uh, created newly and you have to validate it. Once you've done that, then validate the runtime settings and the application configuration settings. And if it looks proper, then execute the smoke test. And during the smoke test, ensure like all the, so I'm talking about key activities and also the outcome. Let me place that now. Yes, smoke test. So uh, as I said, like, we are ensuring all the scripts are working fine. The data are getting pulled up properly, and for that, the purpose of the smoke test. Then execute the test. Like here, I have given like a load, stress, and stability. It depends on your application. Okay, you would have provided in your test strategy plan what are the kind of tests that you want to do. Might be some load test, might be stress test or volume test, whatever the test, you have to do that regular uh, testing, um, regular test. And during the test, ensure to monitor your, your application server metrics using any of the industry standard tools like SiteScope or PuffPod or any other, whatever the application team is suggesting. And also you can suggest them what are the tools. Um, so monitor the test. Once you uh, once the test is uh, like during the test, if you see kind of any kind of issues or something, just reach out to the application team and get that issue resolved. So once it is done, once your testing is completed, then analyze it. So analysis is the key part. You need to identify the transaction which is breaching the SLA, and uh, you have to how you need to analyze you need to it is a regression right so you need to compare the test result with the previous run okay is there any transaction which is which uh, which is a uh, uh, high compared to the previous run that you need to find it out if it is so you need to if you are having such if you identify a transaction which is causing it then use the APM tools to analyze causing it. Like what is causing the higher response time? Like, is it some kind of like method? What is the method or the functionality which is causing it? Or it's like, it might be a DB uh, SQL calls or it, some uh, DB calls. You have to analyze. We can identify what is the DB calls which is taking, which is the query which is taking more time. So that kind of uh, detail analysis has to be done. And finally prepare the report and send it across. So, and so these are the, and yeah, I would have missed out the Splunk. Yeah, Splunk, like uh, we have, we, nowadays we are using it for monitoring the performance also, like it, like instead of Perfmon, we can configure the Splunk for getting the server side metrics like CPU, memory, threads, everything, all the kind of information which will be pushed into the Splunk. And also, analyze, um, mainly we are using it for analyzing the, application logs. There might be a good test, but there might be a exceptions which is happening in your um, uh, application. In. So you have to ensure like you are monitoring um, that Splunk log also. Identify if there is any exception, just add that in your report and send it to them. So yeah, these are the key activities and, uh, the, and the outcomes that we perform during their regression phase. So let me go to the workload modeling. Yeah, 
So as I said earlier, so this is the time we'll discuss a brief about workload modeling. So what is workload modeling? So which is nothing but like distribution of load across the, all the identified scenarios of, a, an, uh, of an application and a test is called workload model. It is designed to identify the accurate performance test result. So it provides the information such as like uh, what type of user action will be tested under load? What will be the business scenarios? What will be the user distribution on, on every scenario? So think that you're testing a banking application. So 100% of the um, users will be, think like 100% of the users are logging in. In that 60% of the users will be doing the statement check and that 30% will be doing some transactions and remaining 30% will be doing some profiling. And apart from the 60%, the 40% users will be just logging in and log out. So we have to in performance, uh, like during the workload modeling phase, you have to depict that. So you, you should not log each and every time and you have to draw, you should not do like statement check all the people, nothing like that. You have to distribute that load across your various scenarios. And so that you need to identify. Once you identify that, uh, then this uh, the, the workload modeling will be effective. So, and what are the key elements of the workload modeling? In the key elements, like we have to identify the peak thing, so take about uh, like last six months or 12 months. So you can get it from the uh, production if you are having access or else request to the business analyst. So he will provide you what is their application. Um, they will have the broad data. So get the peak day and peak hour from that. And uh, next, uh, like uh, you need to identify the top consume page. So here we use, uh, so that will be like, uh, uh, like a lot of pages. So we'll not be testing all the functionality. Performance is only done for uh, critical transactions. So the critical transactions will be decided based on uh, the business uh, and the key scenarios, uh, like there might be some transaction which will be the every day which is happening. So that also need to be decided. So only for those pages, we'll be testing it. So here they apply like 80-20 rule. This is like Pareto rule, Pareto principle. So it means like 20% um, of the transaction that makes up the 80% of the system capacity. So that is how we we'll uh, uh, identify the workload. And, uh, uh, and also there might be some transaction which may not be crucial, but we have to include it. So we'll be including all those transactions. And once it is, then you have to identify the average time spent per users on a peak day. So how many times? So these, are, if you see this graph, like, yeah. The first graph, we are identifying the peak day. We have identified the second January is taking like, okay, that is the peak day where we see like 1.35 million record, uh, peak, um, a million records were there in the production. And if you go again, when we are drilling on the same day, which what is the peak hour, how many pages are being viewed? So that's what here shows. Okay, and the peak hour is eight hour, and where we are seeing 168K page views. So once these two things are identified, next we'll go to the top consumed pages. So get the rest of transaction list of um, business scenarios which is consuming for the peak day and once it is done then do this calculation so what is the average time so visitor will be changing their time sometimes the visitor will be doing for the 30 minutes they will be active in a session there might be some person who will be acting for a one minute and two uh, and two to five hours so we have just taken some of the factors like 10 to 30 minutes how many uh, like uh, from that we have derived the average time of it and the unique vis visitor. So the percentage is calculated from this, like we are just uh, considering this as 100 uh, percentage, we have ad identified this. So then calculate the average time spent by the unique use uh, visitor from this. 
So if you can see like the 55 minutes is the unique um, the, um, average time the um, unique visitor is spending on that particular application. So then once this average time is identified, then you have to do this. So there are various tools, like um, as I said, uh, to get the production data, there are various tools. One is like um, Omniture or you can use Splunk. So here the tool is like, they have mentioned like Omniture. So you can see there are some difference in the production and the non-fraud. So yeah, this is, so we have to drill down whatever the volume that we are getting on the total page views, and we have to reduce it to the number of servers. So for the 30 server, it is this much, and uh, 13 million, and uh, um, like uh, for six servers, how much? You want to identify that for the total page views for the unique visitors, and for each, or uh, which and every, Thing you need to, you need to drill down and your volume your workload modeling is completely done you you just need to hide, um, distribute the volume onto the different business scenarios and uh, do this phase so i think this helps on like how we are identifying the workload model Yes, here like uh, you can see some, yeah, in the past there are some like the performance testing. Uh, so they were like playing a test, just a test role. So during the test role, we used to do them um, like find out the transaction response time, CPU throughput and everything. And uh, we'll be just sharing it to the um, application team. Okay, this is what we are seeing and uh, and the utilization but there is a challenge for the developer to identify which method in this transaction is causing there will be any various of method just by saying the transaction it doesn't it it is not going to provide them a solution right so then the testing phase is upgraded goes to this um, engineering performance engineering where we act as a provider so a solution provider we do analyze all the hotspots and I did, uh, and uh, provide the um, okay which is the culprit like okay this is the method or the uh, um, functionality which is breaking and uh, so we these kind of informations will be provided to the team and also we do provide the client side profiling so uh, that tells us which uh, uh, client side like activities like JavaScript or the web uh, or kind of the image, which is taking more time. So that information will be provided. And also we do, um, so uh, the uh, pat um, AP and the web service calling pattern that will be analyzed and uh, the Splunk logs, the memory leak. So these are various uh, interesting factors will be analyzed and will be sharing it to the client. So this helps them in our identifying, okay, this is uh, what we are looking for. Okay, we can work on it. But doing this process every time will take some more time, uh, will take a large amount of time. So we are trying to upgrade this, like uh, the uh, scripting and the execution. Execution is like automated way of execution. So that is focus. So that is a challenge and we focused on the automation, automated way of doing the execution. So on the automated uh, way of execution, like uh, we identify there are many tools for automating the entire process, like deploying the code and uh, scripting. Sometimes um, scripting also will be automated and the execution will be like automated, like uh, using the JMeter and the Bamboo. There are various tools in the market for doing the automation. So that will be, um, that that is taken care of. And also we are um, doing the dynamic dashboards. Where, um, um, so from dynamic dashboards is for like monitoring the test executions and also taking snapshots during regular intervals. So that can be taken care of. and 
also to analyze the test results there is a dashboard so which pulls up all the results from the database and the dynamic dashboard will show up like okay this is what um uh, during the test okay this is what the response time and everything all this all this information can be uh, taken care of and um, yeah so these are the additional things that we do uh, on the performance engineering side and uh, so this will help the application team in uh, in uh, doing their fix and uh, pro providing the fast application and uh, that helps uh, the entire uh, entire people to the to do their perform uh, task uh, without any kind of like uh, stopping like there is like this is the best application that we say when we pro, uh, when we do the performance engineering when we analyze it so and uh, that's a key point yeah now the session is open for question and answers Thank you, Lina, for this insightful presentation. You may take up the question they are displaying in the question panel. Okay. I'm just looking into your question. Just give me a minute. Okay, I got a question from the Pancho Gupta. What is the new tool or technology we have to focus to continue a career in performance? So that so every day, every time you need to upgrade yourself in learning new uh, tools. There are many tools which is up, uh, available in market. So there is no particular tool I can provide. So the technology is uh, again like we will be working on different various technologies. Uh, like uh, today we'll be working on .NET, tomorrow Java, Anglo, and uh, day after we'll be working on Java. So that like where you are and you need to identify what is the tool and the technology. So that is up to you. Like you have to go through the lots of various uh, websites to understand, okay, what is the new tool which is in the market? Let me try to do some research on it. So that um, so there is no particular tool I can suggest or uh, I cannot say okay this is the technology very good every technology has a different scope and different limitations. So Nick, okay, I got a question from uh, Siddharth Bameta. So can you please submit pointers of workload modeling? So and the point is like you need to identify. Um, the key scenarios of which to be tested and um, the uh, peak day, peak hour, the average time spent per the page. Uh, so these are the key things that you need to identify for doing the workload modeling. Um, is, um, Kriti, is the um, PPTB shared to the um, endpoint or how is it? Hello. Yeah, Kriti. Uh, so just uh, if there are, um, so some of the questions, uh, will the PPT be shared to the end users or uh, is it, uh, yeah. will it be available in your recording of the PPT audio, this video will be uploaded on the TD.com. Okay. Okay, we'll see the next uh, question from Anupa Krishan Gupta. So performance is measured in terms of efficiency or any other else. So performance is not only for identifying the efficiency, it also tells like if you are having if, uh, some um, mainly focus on the page response time and also we focus on, okay, there might be something which will be missed out in your functionality and uh, we are we also I try to identify those factors and will be providing um, a solution for that. Like them, uh, so integrated, well integrated testing, it will be um, during that phase, we'll be trying to find out what is the, some um, just not, uh, okay, this page is responding or 
or other than that we also try to identify what causes that okay um why what how can i say like um, not only efficiency there are some other factors also which will be considered so there is a ask from priyanka what is the difference between endurance testing and spike testing so endurance testing will be doing it for identifying the memory leak that we discussed and the spike testing so like uh, we'll be like it is more like a stress testing we'll be trying to uh, do this testing to in, uh, by increasing the uh, user load to a high a higher level like 1x or 2x and uh, we'll try to see during the and it will not be consistently we'll be increasing it will be like one point we'll be doing and uh, we'll be keeping it a system idle at a like a real time production suddenly we see like 100 users and there will be there will be one or two users so that kind of way we do the spike testing so um this has a two different uh, objectives and uh, i hope i have explained it. so there is another question from anukrishan gupta so planning and designing for modeling is the most important in performance engineering yes with uh, so you where you so just decide like which uh, you are doing the right kind of uh, approach in your application so you need to analyze so your analysis and uh, we are getting the right requirements and uh, you are designing a based on your requirements you will be designing your phase so this is key thing to to go to the further level so which if it is uh, if you are doing the accurate um, perfect planning then your designing comes the exact way and then everything will be the whatever 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 the prediction you are done for your test that will be like uh, you are predicting the right way in your prediction too So there is another ask from Priyanka, like how to identify the spikes. So you can see it at the, uh, in the graphs of uh, the test results. And uh, if you are using any of the tools, you can see at the graphs, go to the graph, drill down the granularity and identify what is the, at what point the spikes are happening. And uh, uh, so then, uh, then go further. And also not only at the, um, performance testing tools at or and also at the application performance management tools also provide those uh, spike or details like okay this particular um like app dynamics i'm talking about app dynamics dynatrice so these things will also uh, provide the okay this is um this has been happened during this time zone time frame so you can identify the list of transactions from them and you can i you can do, do it So I think this is a repeated question from Anup Krishn Kupta. So workload, you uh, have said like we have to, uh, so um, we have to, um, there are key things like peak hour, peak, how can we measure workload, which is based on the peak day, peak hour, average time spent by the users and the key business scenarios. So these are the things which comes on the workload, measuring workload. Okay, well, um, there is a ask from KRR. So, what is the production work uh, load pattern means? So, the production load pattern. So, there might be some peak days. There might be some days where there will not be any hits in the application. So, you have to see the for the entire six months how far. Uh, when is the peak day? Like um, how the like is there a wavy kind of pattern or is it strong creep on increasing pattern? So those um so the uh, few. Um, if you have a so once you have the raw, raw data you can put out the pattern and see like we can easily pitch in uh, we can point it okay this is the day i can see these transactions as these many business has happened and uh, so that's what uh, the load pattern means here yeah so there is an ask from tarun uh, like what is the difference between soap test and uh endurance i believe smoke test so smoke test is like uh, um it is um uh, like ensure the uh, valid it um the scripts and the test data and the configurations and everything is working properly so the endurance test is like 
to identify the memory leak also. Okay, there is another question from Abhilya Sharma. Can you give difference between in-sprint testing and regression performance testing? Is it later also done every sprint? Yes, every sprint is like, uh, you will be like, uh, there will be some kind of scenario, uh, some kind of functionality they are inter newly introducing. And before the getting into any region, they will be asking our team, okay, can you do this testing? So we can do that. Uh, so it is not like after uh, once we start the regression, we will not go to the sprint. It is also taken care of. There will be separate kind of timing. Uh, so while doing the uh, script, uh, while doing the uh, coding, we will be asking, uh, our, and they will be asking our team to, okay, can you do it? So that way we can do that. So that is an ask from Satish Sukhavanam. So can you uh, tell me more about the client-side profiling metrics? So client-side profiling, where we try to see what is the uh, kind of like uh, uh, call which is consuming more time, whether it's a JavaScript or images or which is consuming, or is it taking, um, uh, so server is responding properly. If your client is taking some more time to load or something, so that will be identified on the client side profiling. Uh, client side profiling. So there is no consistent metrics. So you need to identify based on your requirement. So there is an ask from your case seven. Can you please elaborate about um, memory dump? What is measure on minor heap? So with the minor heap, um, GC, this is nothing but the garbage collection. So the minor will be like, which will be happening along with your, uh, so a small kind of cleanup, which will be happening in your low, uh, um, lower level of like uh, the GC. So in GC, there are various layers like, um, uh, so, um, major GC will sometimes they will be having. A, there are various kind of uh, types also GC types. The stop the world GC in time uh, in that major GC the application will be stopped for a particular time and it uh, it will be clean up all the layers. Think that the minor heap will be cleaning up the um, first two layers. Um, there is a perm gen and uh, forgot the term. So. Uh, the, that will be taken, uh, the perm gen will be cleaned up during the major GC, the minor GC will clean up the other uh, smaller, smaller um, layers. So that's a, uh, that's a difference. So memory dump, uh, so memory dump is to identify like if you're if you're if you're seeing some memory leak and if you want to identify what process is taking so during uh, so this will tell like which process and which is causing the uh, the memory which is consuming most of the memory so that information you will be getting it from the memory dump And there is an another ask from um, question, another question from Anup Krishnan Gupta. Sir, there are how many types of analysis and performance engineering? There is no type. Uh, there is no types or something. You need the analysis is like you uh, you need to decide like uh, your application based on your application performance. Uh, you want to see like uh, okay, is it um, the application? So if your um, transaction is breached SLA, and if you are seeing high response, a high um, CPU utilization, then go to each and every layer, like up at the application layer, at the DB layer. So there are three layers: thing that um, application, um, application server, web server, and the DB. So you need to analyze all the three layers, and you have to identify the culprit, the hotspot. There is no defined uh, uh, analysis type. Okay, Anup Krishan Gupta, what is the key management of performance engineering? What is the key management of performance engineering? What is, I didn't get this question. This question is not clear.
Yeah, it's a core matter for industrial development purpose. Performance engineering is the core matter for industrial development purpose. Yes, it is important. Um, uh, so as uh, when, uh, when in the beginning I say, said like uh, performance will decide whether we have to use this application or not. If the performance is low, we'll be trying to do the uh, same task in different kind of applications. So because this world like we are having n number of applications for doing a um, thing that for uh, doing the ticket big. Uh, railway ticket booking, we are having in different apps to do it. If the ISCTC is, um, if you think that rail did, uh, dot net is low, you are doing it through some other app. So that's a, that is a mobile app. So there are so many apps, so which is major. So there is no um, doubt in it. So we have discussed on the operations for performance engineering. So the, these are the questions from Anu Krishan Gupta. So I'm just, uh, So there is another question. Uh, there is a question from Yokesh Shavant. What are server-side performance engineering tool? The server-side performance, um, like App Dynamics. Uh, so that is one of the good tool. Uh, Dynatrees. So another uh, tool to identify the, um, the hotspot, and uh, um, like uh, based on uh, like the technology and. Um, um, technology and the application scope we can decide like what are the other to uh, what other tools can be used so yeah Sinjit asked uh, on the Pandian uh, she has asked a question like is there any specific tools we need to get exposure on analyzing thread and heat dumps so there is like inbuilt feature which is available for the uh, Oh yes, so you can use that for uh, uh, taking the thread temp and uh, for analyzing, you need to use a different kind of tool for analyzing the thread dumps and uh, heap dump. Uh, so that varies again. Another question from what is the difference, uh, Yokesh uh, seventh. So, what is the difference between client side performance test and server side performance? Uh, so, client side performance, which tells about what is happening at the user side, browser end, like at the browser, okay, the, when the user is uh, accessing the application, what are the contents are getting downloaded? What is taking more time? The server performance is like which is happening at the application server, which the user will not be knowing. Like uh, something is processing, might be there will be two things. One is, uh, might be it is a client side issue or it might be a server side. My, um, you can see like sometimes in one system it will be accessing, the application will be accessing very fast, the other system the, it is taking more time to process. It also, uh, it, um, this is because like some contents are not downloading at your end, some contents are downloading. So, but um, in both the uh, system, the performance is same. Okay, it is taking a uh, more response time. Then there is something which is happening at the server side. The processing time is um, like uh, um, like the functionality, like which is calling more number of calls. So might be that is taking more uh, response time. So yeah, that's. Uh, Okay, Sandeep Singh has asked a question. It is a really interesting question. I came across one situation where we two, where two tools are, were giving different values while doing load test on the same website. Two tools were web meter and web load. In this situation, how to move ahead? So uh, are you sure like the two tools were installed on the same um, um, machine or is it in the different configuration? And uh, in the J meter, we are having a uh, different kind of like um, JMeter is a Java based and web load. I'm not sure, but uh, the tool uh, tools have uh, like uh, configurations. The configuration of the tools is will be different. So you need to ensure the configurations are same. Like uh, there is like we can increase a heap on JMeter and web load. I don't have an idea, but I can um, check out on this, and you can um, ping me separately. I can respond.
Yuvak, um, there is a question from Yuvakumar Prashapati. As you said, transform from tester to tester to solution provider. Is solution technical in nature? Yeah, yes, uh, we provide uh, technical solutions. Uh, we provide solutions to the uh, ish, um, to the various uh, uh, performance issues, and we are uh, we have upgraded our skills to the next level from the tester to solution. Okay, there is an ask from Varun Tarun, like a difference between think time and uh, pacing, why both are required. So think time is between uh, like transactions, like between transactions or uh, how much, like it is the user taking time to uh, like, uh, for example, if you are logging into the application, the user will be taking some five minutes of time, right? Five seconds of time to enter their login credentials. So you're giving that amount of time uh, of between, um, between um, after login and getting into the landing page. So that is um, needed, launching application and login. So where the thing time, the pacing is like, you need to decide whether your script, whether your scenario requires pacing. It is between uh, um, every action. So after your entire action is completed, or whether you require a pacing. So it, it will limit like, okay, Sometimes the application might be acting very fast, so you might be uh, you might be restricted to do a limited number of uh, uh, transactions, like hundred transactions. There you need to give a pacing. Okay, might be your application will be doing five hundred times in a hour. If you want to re uh, reduce it, you can do that way. You can do pacing. We, uh, so yeah, we, uh, while doing the workload modeling, the pacing will be calculated, pacing and the think time. The think time you need to check with your uh, application or if they are not clear about it, you can decide. Uh, Okay, Gopinath was asking like, uh, uh, how to tune Oracle query? Is I see test integrated with load runner. Okay, Oracle query, um, um, so tune Oracle, so you can use, um, 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 there is a, SQL profiler. There is a profiler which is available. SQL profiler, yeah, I think yes, so where you can, or, uh, there is another tool which you can use it for profiling and uh, um, how to tune query like uh, you need to find out whether it is index or uh, you need to find the best approach which uh, which reduce the so that is like you have to upgrade your skills, uh, skill set in learning the um, query and uh, that that can help you in uh, tuning it i'm i'm not the uh, I cannot tell you how can I uh, how can you tune that query. You need to understand. Okay, this is what your query does, and uh, you have to take out the execute plan, and uh, you see the snapshot of the SQL query and see what is causing it. Execute separately if it is a stored procedure. Take out the stored procedure and which query is taken, and get that query and try to optimize it. I see. Another ask from uh, how can um, uh, um, Yuva Kumar Prashapati, uh, how can tester provide technical solution? We can provide it if you want, unless you upgrade your uh, skill set. Okay, there is an ask from Rat. Ratnish, Ratnish. Uh, so how you can, uh, accurate is the result from Google PageSpeed? Uh, so I have used the PageSpeed. It is giving accurate results. So uh, so you, uh, like uh, the application again plays a matter, like whether the page board is capturing all the, page speed is capturing all the pages or uh, rendering all the uh, all the information. If it is not so, you need to find a different kind of tool. So I, um, there is no, the tools will be based completely on your application. You want to evaluate the application with the tools and understand whether the, all the calls are getting loaded. Mm -hmm. 
which uh, there is another um, there is a ask from Ashok Kumar, which tool will give a better performance result? All tools will give the performance test result. If your application is performing good, your tool will also respond the same. There is an ask from Sugandhi Arumukam. Does PE stops after bottleneck identification or PE suggests the changes in the hot methods identified? Yes, uh, um, the PE team not only uh, identifies the uh, transaction, we also tries to identify the hotspot and uh, will provide the recommendations also. Okay, this is the code which is taking time. Can we do this space? So that kind of suggestion we do provide to the uh, development team. Oh, uh, yeah, there is another, um, um, there is a question from Harshita. It is widely said that performance systems are meant to provide solution as well as, as well for an issue. What kind of solution are expected? Example, do the performance system is also expected to know the application code, maybe as good as the developer in coding? So first, uh, we learn the application and getting to the coding phase. Like uh, I know that uh, initially getting into the coding, it, it it will not give you a meaningful. So understand the application and uh, go go the coding. Um, import your code, import the application code, and try to analyze. Okay, what is calling and what is uh, how the code logic is. So yeah, you need to learn it, but uh, uh, like you need to decide. Uh, like uh, you you will know the application then get into the development development level of understanding okay ravi raja has asked like how is the performance result in a scaled down environment relate to actual full config production environment so the scale down environment you are reducing you are not going to keep the same amount of load what you have identified in the prediction so you need to scale down your uh, users and the vo uh, the volume and uh, uh, volume and um, uh, volume of that and you want to do that execution and that result will be the exactly so with uh, four servers if a person is doing the test in production you are trying to do the same test in two servers but your volume will be like for the two servers don't do it for the four servers uh, it is not going to give a meaningful result So I um, an ask from Ashok Kumar, how we will identify that there is memory leak in our application. So memory leak, you need to see the garbage, uh, like a garbage collection heap memory pattern, how whether is it, uh, how it is going, it is keep on increasing, or is that like a zigzag kind of like, there should be an, um, uh, the object should be created and it should be destroyed after the functionality. If it is not happening, then there is a memory leak. The heap uh, memory is the one that you need to look for the memory leak. Okay, Krishna, uh, Krish Roy, Krishna Roy has asked a question. What do you mean by hotspot analyzing in app D? So hotspot is the one I'm saying like it is the uh, bottleneck point, like which is the method or the function which is breaking so that we refer as hotspot in performance uh, terms. Do you mean drilling into methods or some, for some transaction snapshots? Okay, so yeah. I take out the transaction snapshot and drill down into the method level and identify which is the call. That is the hotspot of it. Abdul Shukur has asked the question, is there any open source APM tool you suggest? No, I don't um, um, have any um, uh, like APM tools is like uh, A limited kind of like uh, 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 limited days, but you can give a try. But uh, the, again, it uh, like that there would be something for the .NET too. Um, you have to identify what is the tool. I don't have any kind of information. I don't. I I don't remember right now. 
Nagaraja could throw us as the question like difference between heap dump and a thread dump. So heap dump it is like for the identifying the memory uh, me memory pattern like heap memory heap consumption that is going to talk about the thread is like which is the process the thread and state there are different states like um, um, process in progress um, waiting blocked so that will be clearly saying which is which thread is getting blocked for a longer time so that kind of information that we get to from the thread dump Shiva asked a question like how do we scale up for, to performance engineering from testing so you can scale up you want to cont uh, cont uh, continuously learn um, um, you should be in the learning phase um, keep on upgrading your skills from like okay once you, you are once you do the uh, yeah, once you send out the test result uh, don't stop there you, you have to take an initiative okay We'll try to sit with the development team and understand okay this is the call which is how we can see just uh, get in touch with the development team if, if they are sitting nearby or else you can uh, also learn from other open market like um you can do some um, training or also in emphasis network we have full support in learning it you can schedule a meeting and get some help from the team that is like you want if you want to learn it you want to find out a way Abdul Kafur has asked a question what is the level of regression record how to determine it need to test all so what is the level of regression record um what is the level of regression record how to do yeah, test, you, you don't, I, as I said, we, we don't test all the business functionality. We have to test the functionality based on the criticality so that you have to dis, uh, define it how you want it. You want to define um, the um, business scenarios will be decided based on the criticality. And uh, so that scenarios will be regression testing. Every time we know that the login is going to happening on the application page. So that page has to be tested. Like that, there are key critical like pages. Uh, sometimes there are few pages which will not be used. As will be like one or two. You know, once in a while, they'll be using it. You don't need to test that. But if it is critical, if the page is going to like, uh, if it is not, uh, if it is erroring out, if it is going to create a whole lot problem, then you need to test again that. Here comes. Uh, Tarun has asked a question, how important is doing performance tests from multiple geographies? The doing from a single location would also suffix. We might be primarily interested in knowing the server response time. So yeah, um, so this is like uh, sometimes the, uh, the server will be hosted in, um, the application will be uh, uh, used by different geographies and there might be a network latency which is going to play a major role so which might impact your test results but uh, so if the client is ins insisting okay we need to do the testing uh, from multiple geography you, you can pick out you can um, deploy the agents in that uh, particular machine and you can select the location where, where you want to simulate and uh, that way you can do this testing and uh, this is uh, uh this is you need to find out like uh, mm, you have to okay okay how uh, there is uh... One last question, like Emma Sachin, can you please suggest some blogs or videos, materials to become good at performance engineering? Um, there are um, uh, pages in LinkedIn you can see for the performance engineering updates and uh, there are some in Google, if you search for the keyword performance engineering latest news, you can get all the updates of the videos. Um, and uh, there are so many sites. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm done now, Kriti. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lena, for this really empowering and motivating session today.
I would also like to thank all the participants for making this webinar a great success. The session will be recorded and the recording will soon be available on tegic.com. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Lena. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys.